What's up, you guys? This is Warren with Scale Audio, and today I'm gonna teach you how to make a flex tune. So, first things first that you're gonna have in almost every flex tune track is you're generally gonna have an intro. And the intro is gonna be very um, storytelling, very dynamic. And what I like to do when I do drops or intros is I like to make it really big and pull it into something tight. So what we have at the beginning is something really big that we pull into something tight. In order to keep you and your family safe, the CDC is advising that you stay in your homes and lock all doors. Okay, and instead of just going over just the exact specifics of how to make this, I'll just talk about, I got a main sample for the CDC. I added some delays to it. Um, I added some high pitch and low pitch repeats of the vocal quieter that added extra delays. I took some reverb from it and added it behind it. It was a reversed reverb, and I actually just layered it underneath versus I have reversed reverb for this sample here. That I did reverse reverb leading up to it. So the sound below this as well is also a reverse reverb for this. Um, I took all of those and added them right before a really tight just kick with a really tight sample. Okay. Now, something you're going to have in every single flex tune is the, the kick pattern. And that kick pattern is very important for the foundation of the dance. And what we're going to be looking for is everything is a one and, okay? So we're going on the one, okay? So it's one, two, and three, four, five, and six, right? And we're going to do just one and a half every single time. And then you wrap it up at the end by adding two of them closer together. So we're gonna go. Okay, <clears throat> so that's our, that's our one ands here and then our two at the end to wrap it up for the next segment, so. Right? And that's, that's the basic idea of the kicks. And you're always going to have that. It's going to be a very strong high mid kick. And um, I layered two kicks, one with a strong high mid that actually I sampled from some classic flex tunes. And then I layered underneath it a heavier kick. And that's going to give us that. Next thing you're always generally going to have is a, a darker sample underneath. We're usually in a minor. And I actually layered two samples. And I used those samples. I detuned them. And I'm going to mute the bass for this because I've got way too much CPU usage going on. So we're going to get rid of that for a moment. Something you're going to hear a lot in flex tunes is tape stops. I'm just using cassette tape, or sorry, cassette transport for this. And I'm controlling the sound so that the tape stops start and go when I want them to for these samples. So again... The end here. Okay, we got this sound in the back here. This is a very classic sound. You put this in any track, it's gonna get these, it's gonna get high. You can sample it directly from this YouTube video for me if you want to, I don't care. But there it is. Okay. Right away, we've got that kick pattern that's very important. We've got a cool detuned sample with some tape stops and some moments. And we're gonna have also a lot of vocal chops. Now, something that I use that I wanna show you, I'm, I'm not getting paid for this, but this is where I got all my vocals and all my chops and a, even that CDC intro is splice.com. And the reason splice.com is great, it's like seven bucks a month. I got, I don't even use it enough. I got 1,297 credits. They give you credits monthly for you to go get samples. So I can go get whatever I want whenever I want. Is if I need something for a project that I don't have, you know, I need vocal chops for that track, right? So if I type vocals, I can come over here and sort by genre, okay? 
I needed some reggaeton vocals to sample because that's something that's used all the time in um, flex tunes is vocal chops. So let's see what we've got. Okay, it's not even a vocal chop, but that's fine. If we take this, let's just go male vocals. Is there dry? Okay, let's go from reggaeton to dance hall. See if that gives us anything else. More fire. Perfect. And so I can come and find something like this and I can rip it. Well, not rip it, but download it. It's all royalty free. And I can take that royalty free sound and throw it in my project. Um, which I did. If I go here on my project, I've got my samples here, packs, and this is all from Splice, okay? This is all splice.com here. I'm going to take all that and chop it up, which I did for these vocals here. <laughs> which is something that you're going to hear in almost every single flex tune is those vocal chops. Okay. So we've got our vocal chops. We've got our kicks. We've got our sample. Okay. We've got these tape stops and effects and these moments where somebody can, you know, really uh, make us something shine like this here. Um, the, the gun shots and the gun cocks, you know, things like that. They don't have to be there at all. It's, but that, that's something that you will hear. And that's something that I did add. Um, so now that we have all that, I'm going to turn off basically everything else and I'm going to turn the bass back on because we're going to talk about the bass. Now, what you're going to get with the bass is you're going to get these moments where, um, you're going to have a, a quick bass going and then you're going to have a moment where you have a bigger bass going. And what I mean by that is really just the length of the sound. So if I play here... Now we've got the long ones. Now, something I want you to notice about these basses is these basses are going to be very mid-heavy, okay? So <clears throat> what I've got going on here is actually quite a lot. Our original bass is this. want you to notice you probably can't even freaking hear that through your speakers if you're not using a subwoofer. So what I did is I compressed all this low end and left this mid information. I mean, I compressed the crap out of that um, using a dynamic EQ. Okay. I came behind that with a parametric EQ just to boost volume. And that's literally all I used it for. I think I was EQing and I decided that the EQing wasn't necessary. And so I just turned the volume up. Next, we're feeding that into an R bass mono. And here's the reason too we compress this low end is because now we have more headroom to actually turn up like we did here. Um, if we didn't have the headroom, if we had all that low information, we wouldn't be able to turn it up because we'd be we'd start clipping, right? So that's the idea behind that. So next we followed up with an R base. What R base does is R base takes lower information and recreates it higher up the frequency spectrum and creates these extra harmonics. So what I'm really trying to do is I'm trying to make this audible on all speakers and I'm trying to get that mid information and that low mid information really heavy because that's very characteristic of this style of music. So without and with. Very big difference. Uh, if you're not using subs, you could probably hear the, that finally. You can probably finally hear the bass just when I flick that on. And the next thing we have here actually is smack attack. And what I was going to do with this, I ended up just leaving it in the chain, but I didn't, was turn up the sustain. Now, I like to do this with things like vocals and other stuff like that, where I really want a held note or a held sound to stand out but it just didn't sound good when I did it with this, but that's something you can always do if you want something to be sustained and stronger and sound uh, a little bit more in your face and fuller is you can turn up the sustain on a transient shaper. There's multiple different transient shapers. That's what this is called. Or I could add more snap 
with this lower one here, or I could even take it away. Uh, I ended up not using this. We'll just leave it off for right now. Next thing I used is the PigTech EQP1 or EQP1A. And I use this because I wanted to tighten the low end. So this is very good for doing that. Um, without explaining it too much, you can boost and take away or attenuate with this on the low end. And the way that actually ends up sounding is very, well, renowned and characteristic. People use this specifically for that. So here's the difference. If you notice, we just got, we didn't really get a volume change, anything like that. We just got a difference in how tight the low end was. Next thing was some saturation. This is gonna help it come through on speakers and uh, help kind of smooth it over a little bit. Next thing we have here is I have some compression going on in this low end. Because I'm really squashing those dynamics. I just want it in your face and I just, I didn't want a whole lot of movement. I just want it to just be there. Um, this seems very characteristic of the music, so it's something I did. Next thing I did was I added harmonic information up here in the higher end, mainly in the mids. Um, I did that from 500 to about 2.5K, okay? And that sounds like... Now you should really be hearing it if you're not using subs. Uh, that's just adding more of that I'm listening to it on a phone, I can hear the bass uh, kind of feeling to it, making it more strong there from the mids to the low mids, like I was talking about that is characteristic of the style. Um, next thing we're doing is just some side chaining and dipping this for the kick. You can see nothing's going on, that's because our kicks are muted. Next thing here is my Fruity Parametric EQ. I flattened everything out so much, I felt like I was missing some bass. Instead of going back and messing with all my other processing, I just added a little bit of a low shelf boost here. And then last thing I have is I have my kicks coming into this bus with the bass. And what I'm doing with that is I'm just cutting the peaks. Now, if we come listen to the kick, kicks characteristic to this style. have a lot of tonality to them, okay? So, if I turn all this off, that's what we started with, it's just, it's not very full and big, doesn't have a lot of tonality. So I use Torque Stereo here, which helps me kind of tune and change things a little bit, and I add a little bit of an undertone to it. If you're not listening on good speakers or a sub, you probably couldn't hear that, but before and after. Okay, I also added a parametric EQ and I cut off unnecessary low end. I added a C6 here, we got some boosts, but this is a um, compressor, a multiband compressor, and I just did some compressing on the low end. Right, there's a little compression going on on the high as well, but we still have those boosts. And I'm just kind of chopping off peaks to give us some headroom because I know it's gonna come in with that bass. Okay, another EQ P1A, and tightening up the low end of just the kicks. Um, this one I'm actually doing a little bit more low end boost as well, the volume's not quite the same. We have more volume coming in the low end now. Uh, parametric EQ, okay. I attenuated some of the high sounds I didn't really like and I added a little bit of a boost closer to the low mids and in the bass because that's what I felt it needed before and after. Just really wanted to tighten that up, okay. And our smack attack here. And I'm just adding a little bit of transient information back. I was cutting those peaks. Now I'm adding a little bit of that snap back to it and adding some peaks, so before. And you can see the after, it kind of opened up a little bit. And that's that's the ideas between those, okay? We have a very heavy mid for our sub, and we've got some really good tonality coming out of the kick. Another thing that is very normal for this kind of music 
is going to be. So if I look at my pattern 10 here, and we're just looking at the pattern, you'll see there's more kicks up here than there is down here. Uh, if you remember the beginning of the video, I said I layered some kicks. I've got two kicks layered to make the one main kick, and then I'm adding ghost kicks, which are at a lower volume here on the in-betweens. And so that's gonna sound like this. And this is also something very characteristic of these songs. And you will use this in a part to kind of mix things up and add um, a moment where someone can do what they call, you know, modding in that dance style uh, without getting too into the expl explanation of it. And so let's take a look at all of that in a final master track so that I'm not maxing out my CPU and we can actually take a listen to the song and I can tell you about the moments. All right, and here is our master track. I uh, have the master effects turned off because they're adding too much latency. But let's check this out and take a look. So we're going to have our intro, add marker, get up, perfect. Verse one, basically. That segment's going to lead into a foundational section where we're just gonna have some basic instruments and we're gonna really create a mood with the bass. And that's going to move into a mod section where we're gonna have all of those ghost kicks going and we're gonna have a lot of flavor back into our main verse or our main emotion of the track, which will go back into a foundational section. So, and if we take a listen to the full track, in order to keep you and your family safe, the our intro, is really big, tighten it up. Into the verse one. Lots of vocal chops. And switch ups like that for people to hit. Okay, into the foundational segment. Very tight and strong. Notice there's not as many switch ups. I got rid of a lot of the vocal chops, kept a couple, and then into our mod section. And then that's going to go back into the main verse. And that, my friends, is the idea behind a flex tune and the foundation and the ways to go about making a flex tune. I hope you liked this video. If you liked it, please like. If you have any comments, please comment. I always appreciate a subscribe. This was Warren with Scale Audio and adios.